All right, it's time to talk a little self-care. Whether it's making a delicious cup of matcha for yourself, enjoying some time alone, reading a good book, there's too much going on in this world right now for us to not take a moment, step back, and do something for ourselves. Uncensored. Unfiltered. Unhinged. It's the Corel Cast. Listen daily on your favorite streaming service. Hello, it is the Corel Cast. I am Corel. Happy Friday and welcome to my kitchen. You all know it as a place I love and adore. Um, all right, so this show we're going to talk, the whole show we're going to talk about self-care. You know, this week on the show I've talked about being fed up. I've talked about, you know, I've been angry at some points, um, as I'm sure are you. Uh, and I think the overriding theme there is that no matter how long any of us have to live, uh, under any president, no matter how long the planet has, uh, each day that we live, we have to try to be the happiest that we can be. And in this country, we talk a lot about self-care, but we don't really practice it a lot. And we're actually made to feel guilty for taking time off, uh, for being relaxed, for doing things that we actually enjoy because they may cost money. Uh, and so I want to talk today about how you take care of yourself. What do you do? And I'd love your comments down below at youtube.com forward slash really uh, or, uh, if you want to leave them at Patreon, patreon.com forward slash really Um, I, I didn't realize I had my, you know, I, I don't know about y'all. How many of you have the AirPods? Okay. And you just simply forget that you have them in and, and then you take them out and you're like, oh, there's a whole new world. Uh, so anyway, so, um, one of the things that I'm really into, as you know, is tea. I love tea. Uh, and I've really discovered, uh, something that a lot of people already know about. Uh, but you know, when I discover something, I want to share it in case you don't know about it. And it's the epitome of self care, really, because a, there's se the, if you do it properly, if you don't go to a drive through like Starbucks. Uh, if you do it properly, there's ceremony and ritual involved, and there's also history involved, and it's very, very good for you, and it makes you calm down for a moment and relax. It makes you quiet the mind and quiet the soul, and I think in today's world of nonstop bombardment of all kinds of things, uh, I think it's very important that we quiet our souls uh, and that we calm down. Now, for some of you, that's playing music. For some of you, that's just being with your family or your children or maybe curling up in front of the... There's a lot of different... Netflix and chill. There's a lot of ways that we all quiet our minds. So one of the ways that I do that is very healthy for all of us is by having a lovely cup of tea. And I have discovered matcha, okay? Now, we all know the benefits of green tea. In fact, in most of the blue zones, places where people live to be over 100 years old, one of the commonalities is they drink green tea. Uh, green tea is high in antioxidants. It's got lots of vitamins in it. Uh, it's just very, very good for you. And matcha is actually different from the tea you get because matcha is the entire plant ground up. It's not the leaves that are then steeped in water and then served as tea. This is the actual plant and you, you drink it. Uh, and it's, it's just so good and rich and, and frothy and, and got a lot of ceremony. Now I have, of course, if I'm going to do something, I do it. I have a traditional matcha set. You do not need this to make matcha. You can, you can steep it in a French press. You can, you know, you can do it however you want to. Uh, you can make matcha lattes if you want. I know a lot of places carry them. I do want to say something though. Matcha is not cheap. And so when you go to a place and you get a matcha latte or whatever, you're not getting the best matcha. Okay, right, Miss Ember? Get a little drink there, girly. Um, this bag of matcha was on sale. It's a one pound bag from Harney Teas. It's called their Everyday Organic uh, Matcha. It was on sale for one pound for $55. Now that's a lot, but you only use a quarter teaspoon for every time you make the tea. 
So as you see, it's going to take me a very long time to go through this, this whole bag. So probably once a year be making that, per that purchase. Now, matcha has been around since 960 AD. Zen monks uh, used to do it. And then in the 11th, uh, 12th century, in the 1100s, Japan really took hold of matcha. Uh, and, and they started a whole culture based around matcha. Uh, in Japan. It's very, very revered there. There's a lot of ceremony involved in it. Uh, and so matcha in Japan and China uh, is very, very big. And again, it has a huge history from the 900s all the way up until now. That's why some of these ceremonial things look a little older. Uh, this is a bamboo whisk, and I highly recommend getting one. It's got a name like Shasuka, uh, C-H-A-S-H-U-K-A. Uh, this is the holder for the bamboo whisk. Uh, and this is your little holder for your teaspoon. This is to sift your matcha before you put it into your bowl to mix. This is to drink your, mo your matcha. And again, I want to talk about self-care and quieting the mind. You know, right now there's so much noise with the election. I, I don't know if you're like me, but I cannot, just cannot turn on uh, television or anything because the ads are just ridiculous. Now, I just got hot water out of my Zojirishi hot water dispenser, which sits on my counter, holds four, three liters of water, and keeps it at 205 degrees. For matcha, you want it at about 185. So you just let this sit for a quick second. It'll, it'll chill out in just a, a very quick second. So we have all this noise coming at us. You know, I tried to take a nap uh, today uh, and I told, you know, the smart device, I'm not going to say their name, uh, I told the smart device to play music for sleep. And they played music for sleep on Spotify, of which I am not a subscriber. And so after three songs or three mellow, you know, sitar things, all of a sudden it's, you know, Kamala Harris this, Donald Trump that. And I don't know about you, but I just tune out those ads now because they're all lies. Even the ones for Kamala Harris, I don't want to say they're lies, but they're just the same tropes over and over and over again. And I, I already know who I'm voting for. I think almost everyone that's going to vote knows who they're voting for. They've actually started early voting here in Nevada, and we start early in-person voting on October 19th. Uh, and so we're, we're just three weeks away, basically, from starting early voting, 40 days or 39 days away from the general. And so now it's going to be at a fever pitch. Every billboard you look at, every radio station is going to have these ads, every TV. And they're just too much. They're, they're just too much. And the same for the news of the week. We've got Israel and Gaza and now Lebanon involved. We've got world war about to wage in the Middle East. We've got the war in the Ukraine. We've got climate change, a hurricane battering Florida with enormous storm surge. Helene, I believe, was her name. Uh, hitting as we speak, as I'm taping this, it is hitting Florida and people are actually at risk and or dying. Uh, and so you've got all of this going on. And where, where again, where in that is self-care? It's a Friday. You're probably at work. Many of you that are not retired. By the time you get home and get dinner done and get the family squared away, it's going to be 9, 10 o'clock at night. Again, where is that self-care? When's the last time you had a manicure and pedicure? And I'm talking to the men and the women. Okay, when's the last time? When's the last time you had one? It's been too long for me, I'll tell you. Because they're 80 bucks. Uh, they have them at Walmart now. They have a, wall, a nail salon at Walmart. And I thought I would rather die than have a manicure pedicure at Walmart. But why? You know, that's just me being ridiculously classist. I should, you know, I, because they're a little cheaper at Walmart. Uh, but normally, and don't be fooled, they'll say Manny Petty $29. And then you get in there and if you want a nice Manny Petty, you know, it, it goes up substantially. Uh, but when's the last time you had a massage? When's the last time you had a mani-pedi? When's the last time you gave yourself a facial, even just yourself? You know, where you go in and put on a charcoal mask or maybe do a little microneedling or something. You know, just self-care. When's the last time you took a, a nice shower, uh, you know, and, and had lovely oils? What about around your house? Do you have lavender or some kind of scents that are filling your air to try to make it just a little more comfortable? Try to make your mind a little more calm? All right. So for self-care, let's learn how to make matcha. So you get yourself some matcha and, oh, I've dropped my bamboo whisk. That can't happen. See, I should put it on there. So you get yourself some matcha and you take, everything has a name. 
Okay, I can give you the names if you want. You won't remember them because they're Chinese and Japanese words. So you go into your matcha, which is this bright green powder. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that something? Isn't that just spectacular? I believe it's just beautiful. It's this just iridescent green powder. And you put it in your strainer, okay? And then you put this back on your holder because you're pissy. Then strain your matcha. This is going to make it so it doesn't clump, okay? It's just like powdered sugar, you know, whatever, any kind of powder. And as you see, there are lumps. There are lumps in there. So you want to get those lumps out. You want to strain this down. You don't want to lose any matcha, so just press those lumps through. There, you have strained your matcha. Now, with your hot water, you're going to take just two ounces of hot water, okay, to start with. You, you start with six ounces total, which a quarter cup is two ounces, so three quarters of a cup. Uh, so put in two ounces down to about four, which is a half a cup. Yep, okay. There we go. And now the fun part, you take your whisk, here, let me, and you wish it about to make sort of a paste. It's not really going to be a paste, but it's going to be pretty thick. Okay. So you take this and you do this and you mix it about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. And see, this is ceremonial. This is, this is calming. <laughs> I'm calmer, <laughs> you know. So you get this beautiful green liquid all mixed up. Then, depending upon how strong you want your matcha, you mix a half a cup or more if you want it more diluted, okay? But six ounces of water for one, for one of these scoops, a quarter teaspoon, uh, is, about, is about right. So there we go. I'm going to add that back in there. Now I'm going to wire whisk it or bamboo whisk it again. Fabulous. This whole little set was $41. A friend of mine bought it for me. They heard I was going to get into matcha, Hannah. And Hannah bought me this wonderful little set here. So I mixed it up. You can put this here until you wash it. Now you take your matcha and you pour it into this beautiful cup. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous liquid. The cups are six ounces because that's the perfect size of matcha. You can sweeten it if you want to. Uh, I just drink it the way it is. Hello, Slanja, cheers. Oh, oh, I can feel the healing qualities. I can just feel it. Mm. Now you could use this six ounces here, uh, steam up some plant-based milk, soy milk, almond milk, whatever. Uh, I found a great product. It's from, who's it from? Uh, the Forager Project. It's dairy-free half and half. Uh, I would certainly, you could steam up some dairy-free half and half and add it to your matcha to make more of a matcha latte if you wanted to. It's very good. By the way, matcha is delicious, hot or cold. Uh, you, you know, just like any tea. Uh, and so you could uh, use it as iced tea if you wanted to, iced matcha. Uh, and however you, you know, there's a great saying, someone said, how do you make the perfect cup of tea? And the best response for that is the way that you like it. You know, if you like cream and sugar in your Earl Grey, then have it. That's traditionally lemon and honey. But if you, if you happen to like uh, you know, Earl Grey that way. I have the best Earl Grey. So down here, I don't know if you guys can see this area. There's six pounds of tea. Uh, there's Earl Grey, Irish breakfast, English breakfast, vanilla, Darjeeling, and Queen Catherine. Up top here, there's chocolate tea, black tea with chocolate, and then mango fruit tea. There's matcha. And then in the cabinet, I have herb tea and a tea called birthday tea, which is a decaffeinated fruity type tea. Uh, from Harney, and it's delicious for iced tea to mix the birthday tea and the mango together. It's perfect. Uh, so take some time this weekend for self-care, okay? I want you to take some time this weekend, make yourself, uh, and indulge. I don't have the money to be doing this. I can't, who am I to be buying $50 tea? 
You know, I mean, truly. But in life, we're not getting out of this alive. And if it doesn't deprive you of paying a light bill or a gas bill or a water bill, then do it. Oh, do you hear that? Alexa, stop. Girl, she was carrying on back there behind me, wasn't she? Enjoy your matcha. We'll be back to sit and talk a little bit more, and then I'll let you go have a fabulous weekend, okay? Mm. If you're not visiting, take really care of yourself this weekend. Daily, you're missing out. Get the podcast videos and the blog, including recipes, at reallycorel.com. That's really K A R E L.com. It's broadcasting from a completely different point of view. Yours. Listen daily to the Corel Cast on your favorite streaming service. You're listening to the Corel Cast. Driving you home or driving you crazy. All right, welcome back. Uh, first of all, what I mentioned about self-care earlier and aromas and scents, those are very important. And my house currently smells like the Venetian Hotel. There's a store here in Las Vegas called Aroma, and you can go to it online. Uh, oops, let me make sure my audio is going. I don't want to be talking to y'all and not, and not have any audio because that would upset me. Uh, but yeah, it's going. Um, there's a store here called Aroma, and you can order the scents of the various hotels. Uh, and this one is the scent of the Venetian. Didn't, aren't these flowers adorable? You should have flowers around your house. I got these at Smith's for $2.50. I always go there and look at their discounted flowers that they're about to throw away. Uh, and then I find the ones that are the most per couple and they're usually a, like $2. So these were $2.50 uh, and they add a lot to my table. So I've got my matcha uh, and the weekend is here. It's Friday. You made it. I made it. Mmm. That's so good. Can I just, I'm just going to gulp this so I can do the show because this is so good. Mm. Mm. You're supposed to sip it, but child, that's good. So I wanted to talk to you about a couple things in this segment uh, about more self-care and how I encourage you this weekend to do something, anything uh, that frees your mind, calms your mind, that makes you happy and brings you joy, you know? Someone on the chat room yesterday said, uh, I've known Carell since his KGO days. I went to lunch with him. And he, and he probably did. Uh, and I bet I was a lot happier then. Even though KGO stressed me out beyond belief. Uh, oh, the double standard that applied to me and my gayness was such a problem for them. I still can't believe a radio station in San Francisco would have a problem with my gayness, but they did. Uh, but that being said, in my personal life, I was starting to get happy because years had passed since Andrew's passing. I had a great group of friends, including Daniel Charleston, who I miss very much this week. I've been missing him so much this week. Uh, and, you know, I just was, I was younger and not as plagued by health worries uh, as I am now. Of course, I was on a lot of drugs. Maybe that was the answer. I was on a lot of drugs, a lot of Oxy, a lot of, uh, my entire tenure at KGO, I was on OxyContin the whole time. <laughs> And well, most of KFI. <laughs> um, anyway, so I want you to find a place that brings you joy. Uh, whether it's a nook and cranny of your home or a movie theater or maybe you like to go thrift store shopping. That used to be big for me, Andrew and Karen. We'd go thrift store shopping and then we'd go fish shopping. Not to eat the fish, but to put them in my aquarium. Las Vegas is the first time I haven't had a saltwater aquarium. And I think I'm going to remedy that. And I keep saying I'm not going to get one because I'm going to move in a year. I'm going to move in two years or I'm going to move in. But you know what? I'll just deal with it when I move. I'll sell it or I'll sell the fish or whatever. Uh, but again, because that gave me joy. Well, I'm probably not going to because it's money. It's a lot of money. A, a fish, a saltwater fish tank is a lot of money. Uh, it's hundreds of dollars a month. So I probably won't be doing that. But I want to. <laughs> Um, so find something that brings you joy. But I saw a headline this morning, how P. Diddy's case is going to bring down Hollywood. First of all, why are they going after P. Diddy and all of the people that attended his parties? And now those lists are being made public when we still ain't heard crap about everybody that was in Jeffrey Epstein's little black book. 
And you know why? Because it's only entertainers that attended Diddy's parties. And it's big politicians and presidents and ex-presidents and all kinds of Alan Dershowitz. It's very powerful men that attended Jeffrey Epstein's soirees. We're not hearing that. That black book exists. It's still around. Giselle, whatever her name is, could, you know, could release names. I'm sure in her little brain she remembers people. But we're not forcing that issue, nor are any of us. And I believe that some of it was released, and we just, it just, it, the news didn't cover it. But with Diddy, every fart is being covered. And they say, oh, it's going to bring down Hollywood. It's going to bring down Jay-Z. It's going to bring down Beyonce. You know what? How many of y'all have been to a party and freaky things were going on at that party that you did not participate in? How many of you have been to parties in your lifetime where there were drugs going on that you did not do? And up until just recently, if pot was one of those drugs, then they were illegal drugs. How many of you through the years have been to a party where there was pot when it was illegal and either you did some or you didn't? How many of you have been to a party where there was cocaine going on and you didn't do any? I'd like to say me, but I did it. In the 80s, if I was at a party and offered cocaine, I, well, I was offered anything, I did it. Drop of acid, sure. Mushrooms, absolutely. Cocaine, you bet. Never did speed. Never did crystal meth, never did heroin, uh, never injected anything in my body. But cocaine, marijuana, MDA, not MDMA. MDA. Uh, what else? Acid, mushrooms, marijuana, of course, and a lot of alcohol. Uh, so, yeah, I did all that at parties in the 80s uh, and maybe the 90s, a little bit of the 90s. And then I stopped, just only drank and did pot, and then I stopped and just did pot. Uh, but I've been at parties where there was all kinds of sex going on. I mean, all kinds, where the pool was just a Roman bath, honey. You know, I believe everybody was there consensually. I didn't ask, you know, but sir, I've been at sex parties. Absolutely. Did I participate? No, I was married. I had Andrew, you know, and we would just say hi to people. And, and when it started getting hot and steamy, we'd leave, you know. So I've been at parties where stuff has gone on that I either didn't participate in or didn't condone, and I left But when it all started happening. Even Diddy himself would say they'd have the parties and then they'd have an after party. So do I think that Jessica, uh, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick, who have been to some of their parties, were, you know, lubing up and, and jumping in the middle of an orgy? No, I do not. Not that I would begrudge them that. I just don't believe they were doing it. Do you all? I mean, yeah, a lot of celebrities went to his parties. Martha Stewart went to his parties. Oprah went to his parties. Do I think Oprah was in the middle of a room filled with lube and sex slaves? No, I do not. So this notion of guilt by association. He had a beautiful home in the Hamptons. He would have an annual 4th of July party and an annual New Year's Eve party. And people attended very important celebrities. But that doesn't mean they were all doing these freak-offs for three days in a row. Who has that amount of time? I mean, really? No wonder Diddy ain't had a hit record or anything. He's spending too much time doing these damn freak offs. I ain't got that kind of time to have sex for three days. You know what? 30 minutes and then go on your way. <laughs> so they're really doing it because they want to take down black men. And look, that's just the truth. Jeffrey Epstein was white. A majority of his rich clients are white. You're not hearing about them. But the black celebrities, the Jay-Z, the Diddy, the this, the, the J-Lo, the Hispanic celebrities, all of that. Oh, you're hearing all about them. So first of all, they want to bring down black entertainers. Ah, you're fallen. You've fallen and you can't get up. Here, I'll help you. Don't be falling like that now. Oh, I got to fire my cameraman, honey. I certainly do. Okay. Um. So, you know, they want to bring down black men. Sorry about that. And, and I do believe that's part of it. Now you're kind of crooked. Should I sit this way? <laughs> Whatever. So this, so this segment is a little askew. Um, they do want to bring down black men and black entertainers. And it's much easier to talk about freaky Hollywood stars than it is freaky senators, freaky judges, freaky this, freaky that. 
You know what? So it's not for, and it's not going to bring down Hollywood. I could care less who anybody in Hollywood is screwing. I re- I could care less, as long as it was consensual. Period. And we know that some of it wasn't. And so yes, Diddy should be in jail for that. But so should a hell of a lot of other white men who do this to their wives, who do this to their girlfriends. Just watch the show Worst Roommate Ever or watch the show Worst Ex Ever and you will find out that there are some people that do horrible things to people for years on end. And when they get arrested, they go to jail for four years, five years, six years. They've ruined lives and yet they go to jail for like, you know, four years. So I believe that Hollywood will survive the scandal of Diddy. And I also believe that just because you hear a celebrity was at a Diddy party doesn't mean they were diddling everybody. Okay? I have been to many mansion parties in Beverly Hills. Many, 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 many. And what happened after I left? I have no idea. What was going on in some of the rooms while I was there? I have no idea. But did I do it? No. Unless I wanted to. So, you know what? We've all been to those kind of parties. And stop acting like you ain't been to a party where sex has gone on. Okay, just stop. Because if you haven't, then you, I feel sorry. I I really feel sorry for you if you have not been to a party where in the bathroom someone didn't do it quickie or in a bedroom somewhere someone did Maybe not as an adult. Maybe you were a teenager. Whatever. But we've all been to a party where sex has happened. And if we haven't, then you've been going to the wrong parties. Okay. And the, the stuffy dinner parties, they're the worst. Those people get real freaky afterwards, honey. That's dungeon kind of shit there. I'm telling you that. So, yeah. So, I really believe this Diddy thing is not going to take down Hollywood. Uh, and that it's going to, more importantly, come out that this is kind of racially motivated to bring down the black rapper. Because when you compare it to the Epstein trial, when you compare it to the Epstein release of information and the Epstein book and black book and how we haven't heard any of it, or if we have, we've, the media has ignored it and they're playing up this Diddy thing, then you understand. The other thing, you know, America's Got Talent just ended in this, this like 60, 58-year-old janitor one. He sounds like Steve Perry from Journey. And um, everyone's talking about his million-dollar prize. He ain't going to get that, okay? You all got to read that. When my friend Maureen Langham was on America's Got Talent, I read the fine print. When you win a million dollars on America's Got Talent, they want to pay you $25,000 a year for 40 years. That's the truth. Twenty-five dollars a year for 40 years. They want it to be an annuity. Well, this guy's 58 years old. So first of all, you know, so if you take a cash payout of the million dollars in, t- in today's world, it's about $300,000 that you'll get. The government gets half right off the top. Right off the top. They get $500,000. About four dollars 45% the government gets. And then after that, there's other fees. And so you'll get about $300,000. Ain't that some... Ain't that, you know, you, you win this competition, you think you're getting a million dollar prize, and then they say, oh, by the way. And you know, casinos here in Vegas are trying to do that crap now. When you win big jackpots here in Vegas... They want to pay you over 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. If you win $2 million in Vegas, they actually ask you, can we pay you this over 30 years? Like they fucking broke. And if you say, no, I want it now, then they take you to the cage and they subtract your taxes prior to you getting it. So if you win a million dollars, you don't walk out of there with a million dollars. You walk out of there with 400000 which, hey, which of us wouldn't take that? But you ain't winning the million. You ain't, to, to actually take home a million dollars, you got to win like $2 million. And then they're going to ask you, can we pay you over 10 years? Can we pay you over 20 years? The casinos just started doing that. They used to just give you whatever amount it was right then and there. And if they didn't have all that cash, they'd put you up in a suite for the night while they got the cash. And the next day, they'd bring up cash to your room. Not anymore. Now, they want to pay you an annuity. Can we give you 10 grand a year for the next 320 years? Hell to the no, you rich mofos. Give me the mo- give me my money. So this janitor on America's Got Talent, he's only getting $300,000, which again, will be life-changing for him. <laughs> you know, it will be it'll be beyond, you know, his life will be forever changed. 
but it ain't a million. And that's what they sell their audience. They sell the audience, oh, our winners get a million dollar prize. Uh-uh, no they don't. They either get 25 grand a year for 40 years, or they get, you know, $300,000 to walk away with. Oh, Ziggy, stop. Ooh, up in my ear. Well, self-care, I want you to take care of yourself. I want you to see a movie. I want you to get a massage, get a facial, micro needle. I want you to go for a walk someplace you don't normally walk that you love, that's beautiful. Go to a hiking spot that you love to go to. I want you to go look at the view of the bay or I want you to go, I want you to take some self-care this weekend. Have a cup of matcha somewhere. If you live in a city with a Chinatown, go have some matcha. Have, a, have them do the whole ceremony in front of you. Love your dog, love your pets, love yourself. We'll be back next week with all the horrible news of the week. Uh, but right now, I'm going to say I am Corel B, who you want to be, so I'm going to hurt you, buddy. Uh, and we will see you on Monday. Hey, it's Corel. Amber and I would like to thank you for joining us today and remind you there's a way to never miss a thing, and that's by subscribing right now to my YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below or go to youtube.com forward slash really Corel. That's youtube.com forward slash really Corel for a world of great free content. And that content is kept free by the fabulous group of patrons at Patreon. Why not become one and show your support for the show? Just $5 a month or more and you're in. Go to patreon.com forward slash really Corel. That's patreon.com forward slash really Corel. My website is really Corel.com and everything fabulous is there from the show to blog and recipes. Instagram and all social media are, you guessed it, really Corel. And it couldn't get much easier by simply downloading the free CorelCast app at the app store of your choice. And then all the content from Corel Media will flow right on through. That's the free CorelCast app. Remember, I am Corel. Be who you want to be so I don't hurt anybody. And subscribe and participate today.